The sign of the times, a political flag featuring the F word, has caught the attention of parents on their way to drop off and pick up their kids in response to the flag which says F Biden. The city of Kingsport told us they have received a number of complaints about a house with multiple flags hung up and they contain profanity. The sign support President Trump, but it's their language, too profane to show fully on television, that have some neighbors upset. The flags hung up at Michael Wyatt's house near downtown Kingsport have provoked some citizens to contact the city with complaints. That's what we did this week. We watched every episode of Sean Hannity's show and we color coded it. As you can see, we focused on his language, the insults and phrases that he repeats every night. Nasty little words like these. And that's just the beginning. On Hannity's show, President Biden is President Sippy Cup. Biden's a weak, frail, cognitive mess, Hannity says, yet the Democratic Party is portrayed as an existential threat. Understand why so many Republicans have abandoned democracy. To see why so many believe the big lie. And Jill Biden, the future first lady, following suit by telling a group of supporters a week later, quote, with what he cares about, what he fights for, what he's committed to, you get up there and call him a racist without basis, go F yourself. Uh, I mean, not surprisingly here, uh, Isaac, Jill Biden took this personally. Jill Biden and Joe Biden took it very personally. They were very angry about it, and that comes across, obviously, in the language. Case in point here. In this photo, which has gone viral, you can see a 14-year-old student giving a one-fingered salute to anti-mask protesters outside her school. Joins me now, along with her finger and her mother, Megan Downey. Uh, thank you both so much for being with us this morning. That's not something you're supposed to do, but sort of you're whispering to yourself, right on. Seeing as how left-wingers in general seem incapable of self-reflection or keeping consistent standards, it makes perfect sense that now Democrat state media are losing their minds over viral mockery of Joe Biden. We're seeing this across the media now with this sudden dire concern over taunting of Joe Biden with vulgar chants and signs. But at this moment, I want to focus on this cringy Washington Post article titled, quote, Biden's critics hurl increasingly vulgar taunts. Oh, poor Biden. What was it that Washington Post claimed during the last administration that they were holding power account and defending democracy? Isn't their slogan, democracy dies in darkness? Oh, but when it's Democrat power, we're just going to focus all of our attention on their critics. Just look at this picture that they include as an example at the beginning of the article of, quote, increasingly vulgar taunts. So what do we have here? We have gas at $4 a gallon, which is true. We have border crisis, which is true. We have inflation and Afghanistan, both of which are true. And then he's got some notes uh, specifically about Afghanistan here. Uh, child exploitation up, fentanyl use up, COVID-19 deaths up, um, or COVID-19 in general up, which is true. Uh, Fauci, patron, patron saint of Wuhan. I mean, this is all legitimate criticism. If Joe only had a brain, oh, that's so mean. So what do we have here? We have accurate criticisms. We have the media attacking critics of Democrats in power, which is what happens when Democrats are in power. Then it switches when Republicans get in. If they ever let Republicans in, suddenly the media will be holding power to account again. Uh, we also have totally normal, peaceful protest. Uh, a guy with just signs in his yard. I mean, it doesn't get more peaceful and American as that kind of protest. But suddenly the media is claiming that shouting loudly and having signs that are against Democrat is almost terroristic. It just boggles the mind, doesn't it, that this article even exists in a country where we just witnessed several years of intense left-wing political violence that was backed, excused, and propagandized by these very same people. And I'll get more into these stories a little bit later, uh, but if you just do a quick search on their site, you're going to come up with a few examples of articles where they weren't upset about F Trump chants or, you know, so-called vulgar protests against Donald Trump. Uh, I mean, when former Mexican president said that he will not pay for Donald Trump's effing wall, the media loved that. I mean, that I remember SNL did a bit about that and they were all talking about how awesome the Me Mexican president is for saying that, which is, again, mind boggling because we're talking about walls that defend our borders and who wouldn't be for that unless you're, you know, wanting to destroy this country. Uh, and then we have, uh, she put on obscene anti-Trump messages on her car and was arrested. Now she might sue. And I'm going to get into that more a little bit near the end of the uh, video. Uh, but the fact is, Washington Post backed her up, rightly so. Um, and then we have uh, YG's political message is as blunt as can be. They were also very supportive of Robert De Niro when he went on his F Trump tirade. 
at the uh, Tony Awards. I mean, even at the beginning of the article, this is how the article starts out about him saying F Trump and the Tonys. The list of people who don't like President Trump is long, and chief among his haters is unquestionably Hollywood legend Robert De Niro. So, you know, clearly they don't have any, you know, uh, uh, concerns or anything about F Trump or any kind of vulgar, obscene protest against him, which I don't either. I'm completely fine with it. I think probably everybody watching right now is fine with it. But we have standards. We have principles that we try to adhere to. The left, the Democrats, they don't have any actual standards or principles. They just have sort of temporary positions they take uh, for political expediency in that moment. And if that goes against them later on, well, they'll turn on a dime 180 degrees and go against that principle. And they can do that thanks to the media. So the article starts right off complaining about this, this particular sign here at the beginning, which is completely innocuous, peaceful, and accurate, legitimate criticisms, uh, mocking it. Uh, you know, suggesting that there's something wrong with that because that's what they start out with and they say that this is about, you know, increasingly vulgar taunt. So that's a vulgar taunt there. Legitimate criticisms against the party's administration is, you know, legit or, uh, vulgar. And then uh, they go through a couple more of these just random people who have signs that they don't like. Like the guy that says, uh, has a sign that says Joe Blows. Oh, no, that's something we have to, to stomp out. We're not, we can't have that in America. And then it says, oh, this is mild sentiments compared to some people in largely conservative areas. Ugh, conservatives. They're horrible people. And their problem here is that these people express their uh, concerns. They do their protests peacefully with signs that they put in their front yards so that Biden can see them as he travels the country. Oh, we can't have that. The president cannot be seeing that there are people out there that have uh, uh, legitimate criticisms about him. And what do we know? We know those criticisms will never be treated as legitimate because the only legitimate criticisms is of the Republican Party. You cannot, it's almost impossible to legitimately criticize or scrutinize the Democrats because they've convinced themselves, they've rationalized that everything the Democrats want to do is like this dire thing that has to happen. And they, they fill the country with so much fear and loathing uh, that they, you know, at least half the country believes in it and, and believes that whatever it takes to get this done, they should do. And, I, you know, that's what we're seeing right here. Uh, the article goes on to talk about when he went to Scranton and uh, there was a bunch of people chanting F Joe Biden. And I actually have a little short video up that you can see uh, when he enters Scranton and everybody's uh, chanting and, and yelling things at him, which, again, is completely normal. That is peaceful protest. Then they talk about uh, some guy who's 68 who uh, is sporting a red hat that says proud white American. Oh, yeah, that I knew it. It's a conservative area that doesn't like Democrats. They're racists. And that's the I mean, that's the purpose of propaganda like this. They they have to discredit opposition and discredit criticism. And they know they can do that very easily by just, you know, implying or just ham fistedly saying that these people are racist. Then we get to this part. One of the more cringy parts of this article uh, where it says, quote, one of Biden's political superpowers was his sheer inoffensiveness. <laughs> oh, God, it hurts. His oh, inoffensiveness, really. Okay. So this is another way that the media lies, by just simply not covering any sort of negative stories about Democrats. Or barely covering them, then quickly, quietly moving on. Biden is known and has been known for decades as a liar. And as an offensive weirdo to everybody but the Democrat media class. Was Joe being inoffensive when he misidentified a black man in the audience as Boston's mayor? Mr. By the way, there's two famous guys in this audience here, I just noticed. <laughs> Ben Cardin and Chris Van Hollen and the mayor. Or how about that time that he threatened to beat up an auto worker who confronted him during one of his photo ops? Check this out. You are actively trying to diminish your second amendment right to take away your gun. You're four shit. Right, now, now, shush. Shush. I support the second amendment. Second Amendment, just like right now, if you yell fire, that's not free speech. But from the very beginning, I have a shotgun, I have a 20 gauge, 12 gauge, my son's hunt. Guess what? You're not allowed to own any weapons. I'm not taking your gun away at all. You need 100 rounds? You're going to do a veto when you take it. 
I did not say that. That's did. not true. I did it's not say that. Video. It's a viral video like the other ones are putting out that are simply alive. Your whole voice, you said that you're taking a gun. Oh, well, he just clarified it. Wait, 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 wait. Take your AR, your AR-14s and what? Okay, this is not okay. Hey, let's you get a look at There's a lot of guys. A lot of guys wanted to. I'm not working. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're pushing up on me. Hey, there's a lot of people. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, hey, so inoffensive. What is Joe's approval sitting at right now? It looks like uh, approval 42%, disapproved 52%. So that's more than just Trump supporters. I don't know, maybe it has something to do with all those legitimate criticism on that guy's mean sign. So I especially like this part of the article because it really encompasses this kind of, it's different when we do it for reasons, mental tick that all these people seem to have. Boos, jeers, and insults are nothing new for politicians, exactly. Especially those who reached the White House. Former presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama, as well as Trump, were all heckled. But I will say, uh, again, the media was okay with it when it happened to Bush. When it happened to Barack Obama, they said it was racist, extremist, and all that. The current eruption of anti-Biden signs and chants, however, is on another level. Far more vulgar and widespread. It's different. Please believe me. Please believe me. These two fragile little special people even complain about the Let's Go Brandon chant, which isn't even vulgar. Then there are the chants. In early October, an F. Joe Biden cry broke out among the crowd at Alabama's Talladega Super Speedway. Kelly Stavost, an NBC sports reporter, was interviewing NASCAR driver Brandon Brown live on the air at the time. Then she quipped, you can hear the chants from the crowd, let's go Brandon. Trump supporters instantly saw signs of a cover-up because they're a bunch of crazy conspiracy theorists, right? Claiming on social media that journalists were deliberately censoring anti-Biden sentiment. The brief video exchange quickly turned viral, but that is what happened. She could clearly hear what they were saying, but she claimed it was let's go Brandon. The result has been a proliferation of chants in recent weeks, both of let's go Brandon, now used as a stand-in by the Trump faithful, and the more vulgar original, sometimes shorthanded as FJB. I mean, first of all, how do they know that the people doing this chant are Trump faithful? They have no idea. They're just saying that because it's like it kind of discredits it in their own minds and the minds of the people still reading this crap. And I love how they describe the F. Joe Biden chant as the, quote, more vulgar original. The more vulgar original? What are they saying? That Let's Go Brandon is even somehow vulgar? This is just too much. One last thing out of this and then I'm done. Uh, but they talk about some people who have erected anti-Biden sides, especially vulgar ones, have found themselves in conflict with local officials, including one woman in New Jersey who was asked to take down several banners because they violated local anti-obscenity ordinance. And she has said that she has plans to fight this judge's order in court, which is just a, a weird take that they're not defending this woman's freedom of speech. Because when the same thing or a very similar thing happened to a woman with an anti-Trump sticker on her truck, she was actually arrested. They pulled her over for the sticker and then they found something uh, in her background, we're able to arrest her for that uh, from a record. And the Washington Post defended her, which I think is the right move because she shouldn't have been arrested for that or she shouldn't have been targeted. But you see, as soon as the shoe's on the other foot, they completely throw their standards and principles out the window and go the other direction. Before I go, I did want to let you all know that I have some new designs over at my Teespring store. I'm basically just going through some of my best thumbnails and putting them on t-shirts. So when you have a moment, go over there and check those out. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. And if you have enough time, let me know what you think in the comments.